Hello and welcome to the weekly wonders of the Chris Evans Brecky Best Bits. Entertaining your ears, we have cheeky comic and witty writer David Williams, accomplished young actor Russell Tovey, music from the sublime singer-songwriter Jack Sabaratti, and one of Chris's broadcasting hero- heroes, you mean me, Esther Ranson. Today's download is dedicated to anyone who was ever involved in any way with That's Life. Enjoy. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show. Well, here is my co-musterer, David Williams. How was that for you, David? Well, quite exciting, because we saw some firemen. Now, you... <laughs> but they course. didn't lift us, unfortunately. Of course. <laughs> I'm sure they would have done, <laughs> for charity. And that's what we're here to talk about in a moment or two. Now, you weren't evacuated. You were just mustered, weren't you? Mm, but the bonus was that yes. I saw Ant and Deck going into Radio 1, because we walked all the way over to Radio 1. Really? And I saw them, yeah. Ant and Deck have gone in there, have they? Yes. Well, can they pop in here on the way back? They they should do. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Of course, they're back on TV tomorrow. Yes, but let's not talk about them. Let's not talk about them. They don't need any of our help, do they? By the way, Esther Ranson's coming on the show. I know, Dame Esther Ranson. I love Esther Ranson. Me too. I think she's a genius, don't you? My ambition was to be one of those men on That's Life. Well, I'm going to talk about that later, because, you know, every time you come in, I have a new programme pitch for you, which you never listen to, you never take up. I listen to them. <laughs> OK, but you never <laughs> act upon them. No. You know, David and Moira, my sitcom based on Terry and Jean, that would have been a huge hit for you. you I'm you... still planning to do that. Are I you? actually gave Moira a very big wave. Good. She's right. was very flirty with me. Why would she not be? And you with her. <laughs> uh, that's life coming back uh, with David Williams as main host and his three angels, Moira Stewart, um, Esther Ranson and Lulu. Um, that's going to be my new pitch. <laughs> OK. OK. <laughs> now, before we get on to the book that you're here to talk about, which is a book for comic relief, and it's brilliant. Uh, we read it as a family, en famille, last night on the Evans Collective bed, uh, the Queen's Orangutan. Uh, this is all for comic relief. Let's, let's get up to date with you. Let's play Where Is Williams? Williams. Sorry, Williams. Uh, were you offered a job in the Paddington movie? No. OK. Are you going to be in the new Bond film? No, but I went to the set the other day, so... <laughs> That was enough for me. Did you? I did go to the set. How come? Because we were actually filming for Comet Relief. I see. It's a top secret sketch all around James Bond. Is that as close as you've got, though? Well, to being in a Bond film? Yes. Yeah, well, I sometimes when I put them on at home, I dress up as James Bond and <laughs> run around the living room. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be in one. All right, so you so you weren't offered a job in the Paddington movie? No. OK, you, you're not in the new Bond film? No. OK, are you going to be in the last two episodes of Wolf Hall? Um, not to my knowledge, no. So what are you doing, then? Well, I'm, I've written a book. Yeah, for... we know that, we know that. What well, else are you I've doing? been doing lots of other sketches for <laughs> Comet Relief. Okay. I've been filming Britain's Got Talent. Right. Sort of more lowbrow things that I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you in Wolf Hall? Well, clearly not. Well, They're all know. serious actors. I don't know. You might. What would you think Wolf they would put an idiot like me in that? They may have been worried about the series, not having any <laughs> idea it was going to be such a big hit, and thought we'll throw Williams in there for, for <laughs> program five or six, just in case we need the, the press. <laughs> well, it hasn't happened. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been filming, uh, going around the country, filming Britain's Got Talent. Right. How is that? Good. It's an odd process because mm-hmm. you have to sit through quite a lot of rubbish acts to okay, find the good ones. Okay, because of course, Anton are your pals, aren't they? They are, yeah. Are they really your friends now? Well, I out? actually have known them for about twenty years because my first job ever on TV was writing scripts for the Anton Deck show when they had no. a children's show on BBC One. Not for the friends section, the sitcom section. No. So for the show itself, for the game. Yeah, itself? this was a ch- children's show they did like four thirty on on BBC One. It was one of the first thing they did after Biker Grove. Right. And so I've known them since then. My goodness me, well, there you are. Mm. Uh, did they come to your wedding? Um, I invited them, but they didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to any of their weddings? No. So, you know, it's a, it's a <laughs> so friendly not really, relationship. Not really friends, though. Well, friendly. <laughs> friendly, but they don't like me that much. All right, friendly <laughs> They like to keep me at arm's length, and you can understand that. Okay, let's talk about the Queen's Orangutan. Uh, we've got the Queen of Broadcasting on uh, in a moment or two, Esther Ransom. But the real Queen, her Madge, she features in your book. Now, because um, these likenesses are very, very similar to the current royal family, I'm guessing you had their permission to join in with this book <laughs> no well no I don't think you really have to I mean the Queen has actually featured in lots of books over the years the BFG Roald Dahl's book yes. uh, he had a, and I, I used her in Gangster Granny 
But I love the royals, and I wanted to be a very affectionate piece. Um, it's just satirical. It's about if the Queen one day woke up and decided she wanted an orangutan as her butler. Yes. And she's really got a secret plan that and you find out at the end of the book. What's lovely about it is, and it's out for half term now, is that the, the opening couple of pages, the fact that the Queen is trapped in a palace, trapped in a palace full of stuff, mountains and mountains of old stuff. Every night she would dream of escaping. And then it was her birthday. And, you know, what do you buy the Queen who has everything? And our Queen, let's face it, has bas basically been given everything that exists in the world. And so Prince Charles says, would you like a solid... Gold diamond encrusted stair lift. Guess the prince. No, snapped the queen. Guess again. And then Prince Philip says, A great bottle of brandy. Um, no, said the queen. I want an orangutan. Hurrah! <laughs> Why not? It's brilliant. Well, I've always wanted to use the idea of an orangutan being someone's butler. Okay, and, uh, and who better than the queen? I know, yeah. Um, I had a lot of fun writing it, and Tony Ross has done the illustrations. It's just £5. Pounds. It's going to be available everywhere from next Thursday, and all the profits go to Comet Relief. Okay, and that could be millions and millions from... Well, I'm hoping millions. because it's all the profits forever. And I once asked uh, people at Comet Relief, what's the most successful thing you've ever done? And they said it was when uh, J.K. Rowling wrote a Harry Potter spin-off and they made £20 million for the charity. Good, all right. Well, you, you, do, you do more than your fair share. By the way, you're looking really trim. How come? Because normally around Sport Relief, of course, you do get trim because you have to do something <laughs> like you swim to the moon on a regular basis. How come you're looking so well at the moment? Um, I don't know. Oh, come on, you do know because you're obsessed with the, the, uh, way, you, the Chris, way you are. Chris, uh, I've been working out. OK, tell us, tell us what your regime is. Um, well, um... I just do exercise. <laughs> Why do you feel uncomfortable talking about this? <laughs> well, because I don't know. You, you might, look great. You might try and get me to do some press ups or something like that. No, but no, well, I'm all. just I in just good shape. Know. I just exercise and I swim, and I'm just watching what I eat because I've got a tendency to balloon. Right, and okay. it goes right on my face okay. immediately. So there's yo-yos and there's balloons. You're of the balloon variety. The balloon, <laughs> and the face gets really fat, you know, okay. like a football. Okay. Is this because you want to be in a Bond film and you, you think you've been too porky in the past to be in a Bond film? <laughs> I don't still think even if I was thin, they wouldn't be in a Bond film. But um, no, because you know what it's like when you're on television and you watch yourself mm -hmm. and you just see yourself in a way that, you know... You, Maybe a normal person doesn't yourself. see themselves. Don't and you watch go, yourself on TV. You go, Who's that fat? Yeah, anyway, you look fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. So, right, Esteranza's coming in. Are you ready for her? I love Esteranza. Okay, we all love Esteranza in broadcasting. She is as good as it gets. And when you listen to what she's actually achieved in her career, which I didn't really realise until yesterday, you'll be amazed after Noel Gallagher. <laughs> This is your friend David Williams, and it's my job to tell you you're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. Can I go now? No, Gallagher and his high flying birds on Radio 2, the ballad of the mighty eye. Good morning, Christopher. My daughter Hannah, who's nine, wants to thank David Williams. She's finally picked up a book for pleasure and is hooked on an awful anti. Uh, never before she reached for a book instead of a gadget. Thank you so much from her and all us lot, her family, Amanda and Steve Laston. Very important, that. That is great that to That must know. make you feel it good. It really does, it? yeah. And some people say, oh, the first book my child ever read was one of yours. It's a big responsibility, but it's great. And we went to this, um, as parents, my wife and I went to this reading seminar a couple of weeks ago, which I talked about on the show uh, last week, and it was all about children reading for pleasure. And if they read for pleasure as opposed to reading anyhow, uh, their learning ability increases ninefold if they choose to read for enjoyment. That's incredible. And that's what your books do. Yeah, and I think boys are the hardest ones to... to find the right book for them. I think all children would love to read. It's just finding the right book for them. Exactly right. Well, thank you so much for everything you do oh, to help that thank happen. Thank you. All right, now look who's here to your right hand side. Look, it's Esther Ranson, David. Dame Esther Ranson. I know, Dame Esther Ranson. Yeah, it's going to be a mouthful all morning, but I see you <laughs> seem to like that. Okay, good morning, Dame Esther. <laughs> <laughs> Just Esther. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. You yeah, know, you're right, you're he loves right. the title. He's hoping for it himself one day. He's just getting in, he's getting in the vibe here. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. OK. Now, with your permission, Esther, and we're going to do everything from now on with your permission, Dave and I, because you are it in you're broadcasting. Wild, is it OK with you if we do something we've never done before uh, mm. with a guest, uh, which mm. is let you give a huge plug, right, right. Uh, to this lovely album you're in promoting for this special charity, Silver Line, um, yet another, another magnificent charity that you're involved with. And then after that, so get the plug out of the way, and then after that, we just want to ask you questions about you. Sure. Is it OK? Because there's yeah. so much I want to talk to you about. So go ahead, plug away, and then David and I want to know loads of stuff. OK, it's called Silver Linings, 
and it's in aid of this uh, helpline for older people called the Silver Line, and it's being launched on March the 9th, and it contains every song that's ever meant anything to you. So you just look through the list of fantastic songs, all by the original artists. Mm -hmm. For me, it's Up, Up and Away, because my husband gave me a beautiful balloon flight, and it crashed into a bramble bush, so whenever I hear it, I love it, and and it makes me laugh, and, and it makes me remember him. And these were chosen by our callers, and uh, a few of them by me and we think it's the perfect Mother's Day gift or Father's Day gift or grandparents gift and it will raise money to pay for the phone calls from isolated older people. So David has his book, you have your album. Yes. This is all rather lovely this morning, isn't it? Okay, well, let's try and keep that going. Uh, Now, I was reading about your notes yesterday, Esther. You know I've been a huge fan of yours for years. Now, here are the five solid gold bars that fell out of the swag bag onto my table last night. These are the headlines. Okay, listen to this. It doesn't get any better. Um, TV shows that Esther's been involved with. Nationwide, 1969 to 1983. That's life, 1973 to 1994. Hearts of Gold, 1988 to 1996. Esther, the TV show, 1996 to 2002. Children in Need since 1980. Now, that's pretty good. Is That's pretty that's impressive. Incredible. Incredible. However, listen to the small print. David, you take over now. Launched Child Line in 1986. Founder of the Silver Line, launched in 2013 to help elderly people. Ambassador for the Community Education Awards. President of the Association for Young People with ME. Trustee of the NSPCC. Patron of Red Balloon Learning Centres. Patron of the Ian Rennie Hospice at Home and the North London Hospice. Patron of the Hillingdon Manor School for Autistic Children. Patron of the Campaign for Courtesy. And she's also served on a number of government committees, including the National Consumer Council and the Health Education Authority. You are officially ace. <laughs> Seriously. And, you know, you, when, when did you decide? When did you decide to do something with your position, your power and your passion in media? I think right from the very beginning, I always thought if you could entertain people, make them laugh, sometimes occasionally move them by telling them the truth, giving them good information, then that moved straight into an area, well, if this is going wrong, what can we do to change it? And That's Life was always that kind of programme. We didn't just ask the questions. We tried to think of possible answers. And then, of course, Childline happened. And that changed my life completely and forever because... We opened helplines after one That's Life programme which was talking about child abuse. The lines were jammed with children talking about things they hadn't dared talk about to anyone else. I walked into the office the next morning and I said to the team, I think this is more important than television. But fortunately, I was in such a a lucky position because I could do both. And one helped the other. So by telling our viewers the number, 0800 1111, it's open now, it's open all over the country. Children can get in touch with Childline and talk about anything, free, confidential. It just meant that... Children who were in this prison of silence, feeling that no one would believe them, nobody could possibly help, suddenly found their confidence lifted. We were able to tell them that abuse was never the child's fault and move them to a place of safety, and that was so important. And it wasn't just Charline. I mean, things like, for example... You know, um, David, when we were kids and the parks, the playgrounds, always had stupid, you know, rock-hard tarmac underneath the monkey frame and the clamion frame and the witch's hat and the seesaw. You changed all that, didn't you, Esther? We did, because a mum got in touch with That's Life and said, my toddler has just broken her arm by falling off the bottom step of a slide. And we, we rang up all the hospitals around the country. None of them were actually counting the number of accidents that happened in playgrounds. So then we looked round the world to see what else there was. And there were rubber surfaces, which actually over and over again on That's Life, I took a china plate, dropped it on tarmac, and then dropped it on the rubber service, surface. On one it shattered, on the other one it bounced. And the viewers ju- just took the message. So obvious. So it? PTAs all over the country were going to their schools, going to their local authorities, and, and it was all being dug up and replaced. And then what was very funny was the Department of Health produced a report the next year saying thanks to them the numbers of childhood accidents had dropped <laughs> <laughs> and I read it and laughed. You shouldn't be a dame, you should be a saint, <laughs> don't you think? Well, she will be one day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, David. She will be one day. He'll sort it out. But of course, playgrounds now are state of the art and this was the beginning. We yeah. went to a playground this week it was like, it was gorgeous, all yeah. free, it was fantastic. Yes. The, you know, there are zip slides, there's sand castles now, there are these sort of uh, water industrial play areas, it's just absolutely brilliant. Okay, well stay with us please, Esther, please do. We've got some live music in a moment or two and now 
now for you and Desmond. Here we go. The fifth dimension. Up, up and away. Hold back the tears if you can. <laughs> That's right. Would you like to ride in my beautiful balloon? Would you like to ride? Fifth Dimension, up, up and away. Up, up and away. From Silver Linings, a brand new compilation album released on the 9th of March 2015. Featuring tracks chosen, authored in fact, if you like, by Dame Esther, soon to be Saint Esther Ransom. <laughs> so that's life. Um, brilliant program. 18 million viewers a night it got, David. Well, I was one of them. I and was, the whole of I my family, yes. we watched it religiously. We were there. It was absolutely brilliant on Sunday night. Of course, now, Sunday night, the big battleground for viewers, more than any other night, isn't it, Esther? It's incredible. Um, I, at the time we were moved, we started very, very late on Saturday night. We were about half past 11 on Saturday night. And then the controller of BBC One, he who must be obeyed, Brian Calgill, his name was in those days, said, we're going to move you to Sundays. And I said oh, my goodness, haven't you got to be religious on Sundays? And he looked at me as if I was completely balmy, and we went out on Sundays, as rude as ever, you know, with our naughty vegetables uh, and so Yeah, on. funny mm, letters. Mm, funny letters. I wanted to be one of those men who reads out all the letters. That was my ambition as a there child. There are people who say that's life ought to come back, and I think you are an absolute natural for the part, David. OK. Well, I thought, you, I thought you flip it, Esther. I thought David hosts, right? Yes. And he has his <laughs> angels. Yes. He has his angels. No, I know yes. that you host. <laughs> David no, because you've got to change. You've got to yes. flip it. Yes. So you host, right? You're the new heat, OK? You're the, you're the hob, OK? And then Esther, your angels are Esther, Moira and Lulu. Come on, <laughs> Sunday night, straight after Country File. Call the midlife finishes. You guys take over. Excuse me, did you say call the midlife? That would be a really good <laughs> programme, the menopause. No, hang on a minute. Let's have it. Hang Midwives. Hang on a minute. Back the truck up. The reason I've said that is a Freudian slip is because my new book's called Call the Midlife. Sorry. <laughs> We're not talking about your book this morning. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. So, so that's already... I thought um, it was about midwives in the, with the menopause. No, no, in my book... Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, there you go. After Call the Midwife or somewhere in between sandwiched. Country yes, file. Yes. You've gone quite red, Chris. <laughs> it's the reflection of your comic relief T-shirt, <laughs> okay. David. Yeah. Good morning, Great Britain. You're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show. Those are the BBC headlines. Our next news at nine o'clock. All right, thank you so much. That is Moira, a future co-host of That's Life 2-3 Revisited. Do we call it That's Life, Esther? Do we change the title? You could call it uh, That's... Uh, this is Still Life? Afterlife. This no, is not Still Life. Life. Still Life is great. <laughs> still Life is perfect. But given vegetables and things like that, are you, are you going to continue with the vegetable theme? Of no, no, I'm not part of it. I'm, That's going to be the main focus. I'm gifting this show. The vegetables I'm gifting your like show back things. to you. David's going to. Would you? Would you be the main host of that show? Would you do that, David? Yes, of course. Honestly, well, yes. Well, Am I the right person, though? Of course, yes. you're the right Am I person. empathetic enough? Yes. No, Miranda, of course, because you're warm, you're intelligent. Yes, uh, all you're, those things. Uh, extremely Funny. witty. I wouldn't say yes. intelligent. All right, <laughs> can you text in more superlatives that David would be happy with, please? <laughs> on the text, no, 88. carry on, yeah, tell me more things about myself. What are you saying, intelligent, funny? Come on, carry on, carry on. Uh, that's what I can think of, that's where it stops Hot. for me. Hot. Uh, <laughs> getting Why hotter. We all laughed. Yeah, we all laughed. The women laughed. Oh, that's disgraceful. Sorry, David, didn't that's mean right. to. I don't mind. David has his angel. Place. Would you be happy to be an angel on your past history? Show. I certainly would. OK. Angela Rippon, she'd probably get in now and again. She'd oh, probably be on now and again. We've I mean, got the leather chair. Do you remember the leather chair of with, with all the cutting? The Chesterfield. The, the Chesterfield, mm -hmm. that's right. That's where Cyril Fletcher used to sit. Who's the new Cyril Fletcher? Who? Well, Giles Brandreth. Perfect. What do you think? Perfect. <laughs> Love him. He's got, and he can bring his own jumpers, now, which the is the wonderful is thing. that Cyril had um, a toupee. I, I, I feel terrible <laughs> saying that. Well, Charles can wear a toupee. Oh, did, didn't everybody have a toupee in those days? Well, I can't remember having a toupee myself, but certainly <laughs> certainly Cyril did. And and when some dogs went mad in the studio... <laughs> which sounds was, like a good story already. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty good story. What happened was we had ten dogs doing a consumer test. Yes. There were these pellets called Sentoff which was supposed to protect your lawn against dogs. And a viewer wrote in and said, unfortunately, it attracted all the dogs in her neighbourhood. So we decided to test it. So at the command, we let the dogs off the leash, not knowing that one of those dogs was not a dog. It was a bitch. And furthermore, 
I know you're sensitive about these things. It had not yet... She's talking to David, by the way, not me. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, David revealed during one of the excellent bits of music that he's a bit concerned about words like menopause. Well, no, it was when Chris went really red when you said it. Okay. And now you're saying it again. And look! He's like a tomato! <laughs> well, look, that this dog, this lady dog, had uh, not yet reached the menopause, oh, if you'll pardon me okay. saying so. <laughs> so she was in an interesting condition. So all the other nine dogs went completely mad, and you got... Offensive scenes you would have needed these days a, a, a special thing mm. on the screen saying, Viewers, look away. This until is a this... lovely story. Yeah. Esther. <laughs> <laughs> and then this enormous dog bounded towards Cyril, and instead of protecting any sensitive bits of his anatomy, he protected his toupee, <laughs> which, which was a bit of a giveaway. That's show business. <laughs> That's show business for you right there in that anecdote from Esther Ranson. I thought, I thought of an alternative. If you don't. Fancy Charles Brandreth, or he's unavailable because he's a very busy man. Yes, he R- is. Written over 100 books. He does his happiness tour a lot. It's very good. He's a very clever man. Hasn't drunk for 10 years, by the way. Did you know that? He stopped drinking at 52, I think. Really? Something like that. Uh, what about also um, Robert Peston? He'd be quite good in that Love chair. Love him. Christopher Biggins. Christopher Biggins on his knee. Uh, or, or how about Richard Osman? <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. See, the show is waiting to happen, it's there. Oh, my gosh, you are casting it so brilliantly. Oh, I know. Well, I try, Esther, I try. Will you be involved? No, that's it, I'm done. I'm, gift- I'm gifting will you my make gift it, to Will you. you make any money out of it on no, the side? No, of course I won't make any money out of it. Are you sure? I don't do that anymore. I lose money on the side. OK. I'm losing money on the side as we speak. OK, well, we're happy about that. OK, you know, because you're an author now, and you, you're, when you're asleep, your, your residual income is, is increasing. Uh, well, mine is... My, I, I do the opposite now. I go to sleep, I lose. Really? I snooze, I lose. Literally, okay. that's what happens okay. there. Okay, any music anywhere? Anybody anybody can play any music anywhere? <laughs> Anyone? We go ahead. Jack Savaretti <laughs> is good! <laughs> Jack, finally you get to play. You turn up half past five. We dragged you half across London during the evacuation. It was like the war for a while. It's been a good morning. And what are you going to play for us now? If you weren't awake before, you are now. Yeah, we got in there. This is a song called Time Me Down. Okay, Time Me Down. Jack Savaretti and his boys live in the studio. Here we go. Can't hold down. I'll go wild, you can't hold down A homeless child, a homeless child Brilliant, Jack Savaretti and his band who weren't sure for a while whether they were going to get to play this morning but they're here, they're playing, it's brilliant a new album written in Scars is out now it was released on the 9th of Feb. New single, Home, is also out now. Uh, more songs from Jack, three more to come, three more live tracks, and we'll chat to him in a bit. Also with us this morning, David Williams talking about his new kids' book, for Comic Relief, Every Penny a Profit. At least £3 a book goes to Comic Relief. The Queen's at Orangutan, it is brilliant. Read it to my sons last night. In fact, Noah may well be in to review it later on, if he can get out of bed. Uh, Esther Anson, Silver Linings, has a brand, it's a brand-new compilation album, uh, released on the 9th of March 2015, featuring tracks chosen by Dame Esther and callers to the Silver Line. But now, please welcome to the show, here he is, a chap called Russell Toby. Come in, Russell. Hey. Good morning, Russell. Welcome to the show. Very good actor on Russell in something brand new called Banished. It starts on Thursday, the 5th of March, on BBC Two. Welcome to the programme, Russell. My pleasure, Ben. Let me just get into this... Awkward chair. Hello. Now you, hello. Now, you weren't part of the evacuation or the mustering earlier. I was though. outside. I wasn't let in. Then I bumped into David and they shuffled me through. OK. Have, do you know Russell, David? Yes. We're, we're, Intimately. Well, well <laughs> let's just make this clear. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're acquaintances. We're friends. Yes. And we've got lots of mutual friends. True. And I'm a big fan of him because he's such a fantastic actor. And OK. I've what's followed the fa- his career. What's the favourite thing he's done that you like? Well, the History Boys, the Alan Bennett play yeah. we did with James Corden, mm-hmm. amongst other people. That's one of the greatest things, I think. Uh, him and her. <laughs> <laughs> him and her. Him and her, good. Him and her was very good. Very, yeah. this, is, this is very good. And um, right. the new piece he's done, the Jimmy McGovern piece that's starting on BBC Two in a couple of weeks... I've just seen a photo of it. It looks fantastic. Well, <laughs> to the point is, it is fantastic. 
because there's, thing, there's this thing in the BBC now where you can, if, your guest, if a guest is coming on like yourself, uh, Russell, we get a secret link on the internet with passwords nice. and things, and we can go onto this special BBC preview site, and it's for research. And um, I went into it last night, and we watched the whole of the first episode of your new show. Yeah. It is fantastic. Awesome. It's spellbinding. It Great. stops in our tracks. I mean, we watched it in between the two EastEnders, you know, the double bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the hour. Full-on drama. Let's wa- watch Russell's show. My goodness me. Um, just just pitch it to us in a minute, if you don't mind. It's uh, a drama by Jim McGovern, the great Jim McGovern, about first fleet of convicts who get shipped over to Australia in 1788. The first penal colony gets set up. It starts off, you are slap-bang in the middle of the drama. It doesn't kind of pace you in, it's like bang you into it, sequence of events, kick off, and then it's high octane all the way through. Have you seen it yourself? Yeah, I've seen up to episode three. Okay, how many episodes are there? Seven. Seven one hours for BBC Two. Yeah. Okay, and you lot. know, drama, you know, the definition of drama, you know, the the um the magnification of a moment or moments yeah. uh, to stop us in our tracks. My goodness me, Jimmy McGovern really can do this. What about the moment, you know, where... where the, the, Spoiler. Uh, Go on. OK, all right. <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah. there, there's lots of moments in this film. There's yeah, lots of co- I mean, it's it's going to latch you on. It's okay, a crime. But, My mum's going to struggle watching this. She's but there are moments like, of conflict, aren't there? And, and you, you think this can't possibly be resolved. Yeah. You know, and there are like three or four or five in the first yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you film this? Where did you make we it? We shot it in Australia. We was over the other side of Sydney in an area called Manly, mm-hmm. which they then... I've been there. You've been Manly? Yeah, I've swam at, swam at the beach. Have you? Yeah, it's Manly it's not, Beach. Not about, not about you, this bit. It's very nice. Not you, about you. You, you might be a background. Ta- we've we've hardly scene. touched upon my roll, swimming. He's on a roll about his new show. <laughs> OK, I get the message. You carry on, Russell. <laughs> we, sh- we shot in Australia for two months, and then we came back and we shot the interiors in Manchester. Oh, I've been to Manchester. <laughs> have you? <laughs> yes. Have you swum in Manchester? Yes, what, I with, have. With Amanda Holden? Yes, in the swimming pool in Manchester. The aquatic centre is wonderful. Yes, it was, actually, it was. <laughs> Have you ever thought about swimming to Australia? <laughs> <laughs> I may do after the show. <laughs> you might have to. All right, and so the rest of the cast, go on, just drop some more big names in there. Come well, on. Well, we've got Rory McGann, who's the hound at the Game of Thrones, yep. and then we have a conflict together. Miana Buring, Julian Ryan Tutt, Ewan Bremner... There's a lot of new actors yep. which have done the rounds, but this is kind of a big showcase for them. Everyone in it is spot on. And it's, it's going to be on BBC Two. Um, correct. It's, what the night is it going to be on? Do we know? Thursday night, March Thursday. the fifth. Okay, and people. I say, Chris, yes, I know sure. this is not Actually, about me. You can me. say anything you'd like. All right, now, dearest Russell, you, everybody is spot on. Uh, one day, I would love an actor to say everybody except one was spot on, but one was so dire that it was hell playing with. Them. But actually, they're all... So, you know, that's why they're lovers, isn't it? They, they, love, it. they love it. They love each other. No, no, let's but just, this is true is on this all one. All right, no, let's, OK, let's say everybody is brilliant, right? Yeah. So in the context of brilliance, who's the worst? Hey! Oh. <laughs> who, who, if you had, who, 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 who do you think? Oh well, maybe. Oh, oh you me. can't do that. I don't oh. know. I, I can't choose. I can't say that anyone's bad. No, Everyone is giving do. their. I mean, you watched it. Was there anyone in it you thought? All you mm. have to do is tell me to shut up and shut move up. on. <laughs> say, shut up, you stupid DJ, and play a record. Just say that. Go on. Go on I can't say that. I've got too much respect <laughs> for you. Oh, thank you very much indeed. He lies so well. <laughs> I'm an actor. Here's <laughs> I'm an actor. Of course, I'm an actor. Uh, Walt Thomas and Town Call. The ugly. After this, more live music from Jack Savaretti and more from David Williams and Esther too. War Thomas and Town Called Ugly. So our guests this morning all seem to be getting on very well. Uh, it doesn't always happen. Uh, I don't usually talk about it on the air, but it can be a bit awkward in here. It actually can be a bit awkward in here sometimes. And it's mostly awkward when we're playing the records, because that's when people have to talk to each other sort of half in real life. But David, even though he's got his arms folded now, he, um, <laughs> you, you said it's going quite well, didn't you? I think it's going very well. <laughs> You're quite surprised. Well, yeah, I mean, I listen to the show regularly, so I'm, I'm really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> he said... He said, he said Great show, great show. <laughs> Seriously, it's right. more fun when people disagree when they when they. But it's not it question can... time, is it? No, you know? no, that's true. By the way, that needs mixing up now again. Hey, it? but that Russell Brand one was <laughs> so funny with Nigel Farage. Did you see? Yeah, it? I did see. Yeah, I thought it was hysterical. Well, anything that gets it going is fine by me. Yes, you, know? you on it would be. No, great. I've been asked to go on it. And? You've been asked to go on it, David. Yes, but um, I try not to get involved in politics because I think it's a bit of a turn off for people. Yeah, but also I think you you know you've got to know your stuff to get on yes, that show. Yes, yeah, you've you? got to read the papers or watch the news on, I, on a regular I've basis. Mm. <laughs> Have you done it? I've done it. It was extremely intimidating, and. 
and I made a complete fool of myself and, and everybody was very cross with me afterwards. Really? Who was cross with you? Your friends and family or...? Um, no. Um, uh, viewers, unfortunately, because um, I was saying that violence is addictive and people took it personally. Yeah, but you, but you are going to say something like that, though, aren't you? Because you're sort of uncensored. As, you, you don't censor yourself. Absolutely. And you sit there and all these people are saying things. It was at the time of the MP's expenses and I was getting a bit... Aerated, a bit cross with them. But best not to get aerated live on TV, though. Very important. Mm, I think so. Best not to get aerated ever. <laughs> ever, <laughs> stay cool, I tell babe. myself. Stay, stay cool. cool. So we have Russell Tover here. We have Esther um, Ranson. I need to call you Esther Williams, then. You haven't swum and done things no, like that. No, I should have swum more, like David. And then perhaps I, too, would have a great career. They said wet she was a star, but they don't say what happened to Esther Williams when she was dry. Perhaps not so much of a star. Anyway. Uh, right, so David <laughs> Wang, David Wang's also here. Um, now, Esther, you, are, you seem super confident, you know, like, talking about your opinions on Question Time typifies what I wanted to talk about this morning. One of the things. It's about the fact you have this sort of, this inner author in you, this inner voice, which you don't have to think about, you don't have to edit, it's what you think. You have these steadfast opinions. Have you ever suffered from self-doubt? Um, usually. Uh, in fact, all the time. I mean, it, I think if you talk to any working mother... Or working grandmother, you will find inner doubt. You will find constant guilt. So basically, I um, stamp on it. Okay, but that's that's sort of in real life. I'm talking yes. about in, in your professional life because yeah. for me, you know, you you are you have always been like the, sort of the prime minister, the life the life president, if you like, of TV. Did you ever doubt yourself in TV terms? Uh, here's the thing: I have never had a plan B. Mm -hmm. Whatever I've done, idiotic as it may seem. I've never thought, and what happens if it fails? Right. And sometimes it does. When I stood for Parliament in the last election, I lost my deposit. I hadn't really thought that through. Extremely expensive. Um, but with Child Line, I'm now with the Silver Line. Sometimes, after the event, I think to myself, what would have happened if it hadn't worked? What would have happened if the children had not rung us or we hadn't been able to pay for the calls? Same with the Silver Line. We've had 300,000 calls in one year. Mm, it's amazing. From that's like the opposite of self-doubt. That's things that have been successful. Then you then put yourself through the poker of what if it hadn't worked? What a strange thing to do to yourself. <laughs> David, self-doubt in your career. Tell us about that. Oh, completely. I'm completely racked by it, but um, you just tr it's show business, so you try and pretend you don't have it. Does it come with the territory, do you think? Yeah, and I also think you can't reasonably expect for everything you do to be successful. And not, and not to be criticised. And you have to look at careers of people you admire and see that they had failures too and not, and not worry too much about it. Russell? Yeah. I mean, it's the epitome of an actor. High ego, low self-esteem. <laughs> 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 that's the anxiety. That's the, com yeah. that's the classic conflict, totally. isn't it? That sends you Massive bonkers, ego, doesn't it? Low self -esteem, How bonkers can't back are you it up. now, right now? Right now? Yeah. This second? Yes. I'm pretty all right. I've had a coffee, so I'm <laughs> buzzing a tiny bit, but I'm OK. You're very cool, aren't you? Very chill. Thanks, Chris. Chill character. Have you been approached for a Bond movie? No. I want to be a... Bond babe. No, not yet. <laughs> I'd like to. At some point, of course. I but... think you could be. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jack, do you have some more live music for us, please? Yeah, I do. What, what are you going to play for us this next? This is a song that you've kind of been playing a lot, and it's a song called Home. OK, current single, Jack Savaretti. Here we go. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jack. Savaretti, home. You're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. With us this morning, Esther Ranson. Dame Esther Ranson. Very good, very good. Very good. Russell Tovey. Dame Sorry. Russell Tovey. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back in sync, you see? You give the guy a comfort break and he goes all A1 on us. All right. Uh, with us this morning, telling us about stuff, good stuff that's uh, available. For you to enjoy, David Williams talking about his new kids' book, The Queen's Orangutan, purely for comic relief. Um, it could raise millions, it probably will raise millions. It's out next Thursday, it's brilliant, it's a fiver, and at least £3 of every copy goes to um, comic relief. Esther Ranson, Silver Linings, is a brand new compilation album released on the 9th of March 2015. It features tracks chosen by Esther Ranson. Dame Esther Ranson. <laughs> and call us to the Silver Line. Hello. Dame the Silver Line. <laughs> Dame the Silver Line? It doesn't matter, does it? doesn't it? make sense. It doesn't really make sense on this programme. Uh, Russell Toby's here uh, talking about his new BBC drama, which isn't uh, on the air until the Thursday, the 5th of March. But we're giving you this heads up because you need to gonna get, you get ready for it because it is so, I mean, it is so, literally, so dramatic. It's not funny. And Jack Savaretti's here playing more live music. Big round of applause for Jack in the back. Woo! 
Ooh. working hard this morning, Jack. Introduce your band, if you don't mind. Off you go. We got Henry, Jean, Pedro and Jasper over there. OK, and th these guys, if you only just tuned in over an hour ago, we had to evacuate the building because we had a fire alarm. And these guys were all involved in the mustering, weren't they, Jack? I mean, I was scared it was one of us that did it, but we were, we're, we're, we're not guilty. We're, we're innocent. Yeah, we're innocent. Okay, there was actually smoke coming from a locked room, so it was uh, almost justifiable this Do fire. Do we know who, who caused that? Well, we think it was the show because we think this show is regularly on fire. Uh -huh. And oh. today, because you guys were here, it just got a little too hot. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. But yeah. we've been cooling it down successfully ever since. <laughs> uh. Dame <laughs> Esther Ransom. <laughs> OK, <laughs> questions from the guest to the guest. Who wants to go first? Um, well, i got a question for Russell. Yes. I know Russell's a, he's a bit of a pin-up, and I just wondered if you'd ever had any funny letters over the years from amorous fans. Um, amorous fans? Or strange yeah. gifts at stage door. Well, how, how many did you send? <laughs> I got all of your letters and still kept your gift. Did you get the drawings and the Polaroid pictures? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, got those. Um, have I had... Yeah, I mean, I, I get asked for my underwear regularly from people. Uh, I have, Is it men or women, mainly? It's mainly men. Mm. Uh, I get... I had one letter once from some guy... Uh, saying about how his mum was very ill, all laminated. There's about ten sheets all laminated. <laughs> you can fold them over. All about how his mum was ill. He wanted me to come and meet him, talk to him about it. And then at the end, it said, if you can't do that, please just send me your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> right, next uh, question to one of our guests, from one of our guests. Oh, OK, but I'm just thinking, is there any man in the world whose underwear I would wish? No. Right. <laughs> um... David, mm. being a judge on Britain's Got Talent, mm. what was the worst act that you ever had to judge and were you mean about that person? Well, there was a, a gentleman came on and his act was um, he ate live cockroaches. Oh. Ah. He had a brown paper bag full of cockroaches. Ah. And he spoke like this and he had false teeth rattled in his mouth. <laughs> and he had this uh, sort of dark uh, black hair dyed and sunglasses and he had... I know what you're thinking, they've dug up Roy Orbison. <laughs> that was his opening line. And then, what's your act? <gasps> I'm going to eat live cockroaches. Oh, and then he started doing it and he got buzzed off immediately. Did he make the live shows? Um, the TV show? He made the final that year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think he was very briefly, he was very briefly featured, yeah, but he was oh. my favourite. I mean, such a bizarre character. <laughs> oh. right. What worries me most about that story is who was there protecting the cockroaches? I was once in the jungle for ITV I and know. they showered me with such things. Yes. And my thought was, well, what about them? I mean, I knew that I was going to go through hell in the jungle, but nobody told the cockroaches that they were going to have to crawl all over no, me. Well, the cockroach agent, yes. right? Um, it Must was have like, done a deal. Yeah, well, they were either. I, th I heard they turned down Big Brother to go to the jungle. Yeah, they the have to sign a release form, I think, the yeah. cockroaches. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but those poor cockroaches, I mean, they couldn't sign anything. Well, we buzzed very quickly, so I think it was probably only one or two cockroaches. Well done, well died. done, Britain's Got Talent. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, keeping it right out there for, for the world in general. <laughs> Russell, a question, please. Uh, to Esther. So you were asking David about his favourite contestant, or one of the most disgusting. What is there one. Charity case out of everything that sticks with you, you still think about constantly. Oh, wow. God, there are so many, Russell. That's the thing. Um, yes, there have been um, children who've wronged Childline uh, 0800 111 free confidential. I'm saying that because you've got lots of young people listening and they might just have something they'd like to talk about. And um, I met uh, her when she was a young adult, and she told me that actually the call she'd made to Childline had transformed her life completely oh. because it had given her hope. And the thing is, hope is what makes us get up in the morning, and so many of these young people think that their situation is hopeless and there's no way of stopping whatever is happening and going wrong in their lives. And the fact that they can talk to someone who says, wait a minute, A, this is not your fault, and B, let's talk about it a bit more because things could change and that was enough to give them hope. Yeah, the beginning of a conversation, yeah. isn't it? Exactly okay. right. Because when you've only got your own ears to yes. talk to, it sends you crazy, doesn't exactly it? Exactly right. And they do tend to take on the guilt and the shame and the fear and they do tend to think that it's all their fault, that everybody else is loved and happy, mm. you know, and, and they're the only ones that have got things going wrong in their lives. And Can we make you something else? I mean, D yeah. David's suggesting a, a saint's hood, but yeah. unfortunately you're going to have to die for that to happen. Um, <laughs> so you're currently a dame. What, what's, what's above a dame? What could we go for next? Um, 
you could invite me back on the show because it's such fun. That okay. would be really that would be a real honour. Right. Well, have, basically have every time you're it. on, she's on. Okay. And every fine. time she's on, you're on. That's fine. fine. Okay. That's fine. And you'll be on to promote your new Sunday night show. Of course you will. <laughs> right. You're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio Two. Joining us now, the Reverend Richard Coles. Good morning, Richard. Very good morning. Very sorry about that incident with the incense <laughs> earlier. I shouldn't have stoked it up inside. <laughs> We got some fresh air, and you know what they say: fresh air, fresh thoughts. Give us some of yours. Well, it may not be St Esther's Day today, but it is in fact the feast of St Wulfric of Hazelbury, a priest in 12th century England. He neglected his flock to go hunting and dancing and fighting, which he loved, until a beggar pricked his conscience and he gave it all up to become a hermit. Unfortunately, his chainmail made kneeling awkward, so he prayed earnestly for a miracle and found his shears cut through it as if it were silk. And thanks be to God, he was able to alter his hem without too much trouble. Rather a rubbish miracle, you might think, but typical of the lives of the saints of the Middle Ages, a rich fund of stories which I've taken to posting on social media every morning. This is not only because of the sheer delight of their adventures and misadventures, being taken up by clouds and dropped off near Daventry, reading at night by the light of a magically glowing finger, floating up to the roof of the Sistine Chapel during an audience with the Pope, that sort of thing, but because I think they tell us something important. You may snort as indeed my correspondents often do, you can't actually believe this nonsense. No, of course not. I think they're legends, no more literally true than Greek myth or the creation accounts in the Bible. But once you've got over that, you may see, coming into focus, from people very remote from us in time and place and custom, something surprisingly powerful and enduring, something that called them from lives of ease and pleasure to lives of simplicity and service. And if all that seems hopelessly oldy-worldy, it endures, I'd argue, in comic relief when we wear red noses and sit in baths of baked beans and dress as Madame de Pompadour, looking at to you here, David. (laughs) Um, Because in a world of plenty, where millions starve, where the weakest and most vulnerable among us are routinely neglected, where children are born not into hope for the future, but a prison of want, nonsense starts to look like sense. Thank you so much, Reverend Richard Coles. You're very welcome. Lovely Cardi as well. It's not. I've got a hole in the sleeve. I think that, that makes it even better, more well, charming. Uh, for Church of England clergy, they always put holes in the sleeves <laughs> of the cardigans. It's they a whole come thing. with holes. Exactly. They're truly yeah. holy. They're pre-holes. Oh. You're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. All right, thank you so much. And special guests this morning, guests of honour, are the Marples and the McAvoys who've been with us all morning. Come here, guys. Come and say hello. Go to that microphone over there. These guys have given us over, over £100,000 for children in need to what? be here. Wow. Wow. Come on, guys, say hello to some people on behalf of the gang. They support us in many things, and hopefully they always will. It's great to have you again. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Hi. Are you, are you happy with your wash? We're yes, very happy, great. very happy. Can we offer you two boxes of your old powder for one box of your new no, powder? Definitely no, definitely not. Thank no. you. But can we take David and Russell and Esther home with us? <laughs> yeah. Because oh, they're great fun. Yeah. Does that mean I get to keep Jack? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fine, fine yeah. with me. OK, listen, thanks, Sarah so said no. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. And once again, thanks for your more than generous donation. Don- over generous. Thanks to our guest this morning, David Williams. What can you tell me about here? I can tell you that Russell Tovey, the very sexually attractive actor, has a new BBC drama called Banish, which starts Thursday the 5th of March on BBC Two, and it's set in Australia in 1798. Thank you, Russell. And Russell, what can you tell us about here? I can tell you about David Williams, the sexually attractive (laughs) everything. Uh, His new children's book, The Queen's Orangutan, it's published on the 26th of February, which is actually next Thursday, with proceeds going to Comic Relief. And Comic Relief is actually back on Friday the 13th of March. Thank you. Russell and Esther Ranson. What can you tell us about this morning? I can tell you the deliciously grubby Jack Savaretti's <laughs> <laughs> new album, Written in Scars, is out now, released 9th of February. Nothing to do with Fifty Shades of Anything. New single, Home, is also out now. OK, uh, so Jack Grabaretti, uh, Grubby Retti, uh, <laughs> what can you tell us about? That's going to stick. Uh, the beautiful Esther Ranson, Silver Linings, is a brand new compilation album released on the 9th of March, and it's going to feature tracks chosen by Dame Esther and call us to the Silver Line. Thank you to all our guests this morning. Big round of applause for our musicians who work harder than anyone. <laughs> uh, Jack, what are you going to play us out with into Zoe Ball? This is a Ray Charles moment of magic we're going to do for you guys. We're going to try and do for you guys. All right, I'm sure you will. Thank you so much.